translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I'm not going to uh, have responsive chanting of this because this is not a verse. Sorry, there's no meter to chant it with. Well, and that's it, the whole point. It's not a shloka. It's Gad, gadya, gadya bhote, prose. It's called. It's given. It's written here. Text eight. It's it's just writing without any. It's not broken into a, any meter. Vidvan Goranga Das, what are you, Adhikari? Um, What's the, when there's Bhagavad Parayana, then the shlokas will be chanted. How will this Gadya be chanted, this prose section? Any, any rules for that? In a lot of Shastras, not in verses, isn't it? Isn't it? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 is there responsive chanting of that? Traditionally, any idea? Yeah, uh, for Gadya also. But is there any... Uh, there are no meter. So. But then you'll have to break at some point, because it's not expected that the brahmacharis who are learning by hearing can, if you just chant, say, a hundred words at one time, they won't, you have to break. So... So the, uh, the the guru who's chanting, he will ju- arbitrarily he will break it, is it? Yeah, but that's there. But I see. But that's that can be quite long. Have to be sharp guru cool kids to remember it all. Okay, so anyway, I'll just chant it. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasya ha va ena kunaka uchaya etasmin krita nijab himana sya hara has tat poshana palana lalana prina nanu dhane natna niyama sahayama purusha paricharya daya e kai kasha Katipayena ganena viyujjamana kilasarava evodavasmin. Translation Gradually Maharaj Bharat became very affectionate toward the deer. <coughs> he began to raise it and maintain it by giving it grass. He was always careful to protect it from the attacks of tigers and other animals. When it itched, he petted it. And in this way, he always tried to keep it in a comfortable condition. He sometimes kissed it out of love. Being attached to raising the deer, Maharaj Bharat forgot the rules and regulations for the advancement of spiritual life And he gradually forgot to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After a few days, he forgot everything about his spiritual advancement. (laughs) 
அது தன் மீது உரசும் பொழுது அதனை தட்டி கொடுப்பார் அதனை கண்ணும் கருத்துமாக வளர்ப்பதில் கவனமுடன் முயற்சித்து வந்தார் அன்பின் மிகுதியால் அதனை அவர் முத்தமிடுவார் மானின் மீது கொண்ட பற்றுதல் காரணமாக பரத மகாராஜா ஆன்மீக வாழ்வின் முன்னேற்றத்திற்கான ஒழுங்குமுறை விதிகளை மறந்தார் படிப்படியாக அவர் முழுமுதற் கடவுளை வழிபடுவது வழிபடுவதையும் கூட மறந்தார் சிறிது நாட்களில் அவர் தனது ஆன்மீக வளர்ச்சிக்கான அனைத்தையுமே மறந்து போனார் From this, we can understand how we have to be very cautious in executing our spiritual duties by observing the rules and regulations and regularly chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If we neglect doing this, we will eventually fall down. We must rise early in the morning, bathe the ten mongolarity, worship the deities, chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. Study the Vedic literatures and follow all the rules prescribed by the Acharyas and the spiritual master. If we deviate from this process, we may fall down, even though we may be very highly advanced. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Yajna dana tapa karma natya jang karya mevatat Yajna danam tapas chayva pavanani manishinam Acts of sacrifice, charity and penance are not to be given up but should be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity and penance purify even the great soul. End of translation of that verse. Even if, we're, even if one is in the renounced order, he should never give up the regulative principles. He should worship the deity and give his time and life to the service of Krishna. He should also continue following the rules and regulations of austerity and penance. These things cannot be given up. One should not think oneself very advanced simply because one has accepted the sannyas order. The activities of Bharat Maharaj should be carefully studied for one's spiritual advancement. <laughs> இதிலிருந்து ஹரே கிருஷ்ண மகாமந்திரத்தை தொடர்ந்து ஓதி ஓதி ஒழுங்குமுறை விதிகளை பின்பற்றி ஆன்மீக கடமைகளை செய்வதில் நாம் எத்தனை எச்சரிக்கையோடு இருக்க வேண்டும் என்பதை இந்நிகழ்ச்சி உணர்த்துகின்றது நேதிகளை புறக்கணித்தோமாயின் அதை தொடர்ந்து நமக்கு வீழ்ச்சியே ஏற்படும் அதிகாலையில் எழுந்து நீராடி மங்கள ஆரத்தியில் கலந்து கொண்டு திருமூர்த்தங்களை வழிபட்டு ஹரே கிருஷ்ண மகாமந்திரத்தை ஓதி வேத இலக்கியங்களை கற்று ஆச்சாரியர்கள் மற்றும் ஆன்மீக குருக்கள் குறிப்பிடும் விதிகளை பின்பற்றி நாம் நடத்தல் வேண்டும் இம்முறையிலிருந்து நாம் மாறுபடாமல் நாம் எவ்வளவு உயர்ந்த நிலையில் இருந்த போதிலும் வீழ்ச்சியடைவோம் கீதை எட்டு பதினைந்து பின்வருமாறு கூறுகிறது யஜ்யதான தபக்கர்ம நத்தியாஜ்யம் காரியமேவத்தார் மேற்கொண்டிருந்த போதிலும் ஒருவன் ஒழுங்குமுறை விதிகளை மட்டும் ஒரு நாளும் விட்டுவிடக் கூடாது அவன் திருமூர்த்தத்தினை நாளும் வழி வழிபட்டு தனது வாழ்வினையும் காலத்தையும் கிருஷ்ணரின் தொண்டிற்கு ஈடுபடுத்த வேண்டும் அவன் துறவு நெறி மற்றும் தவத்திற்கான ஒழுங்குமுறை விதிகளையும் தொடர்ந்து பின்பற்ற வேண்டும் இவை விட்டுவிடக்கூடியன அல்ல துறவரத்தினை மேற்கொண்டதினாலேயே மிகுந்த வளர்ச்சி பெற்று விட்டோம் என்று ஒருவன் கருதக்கூடாது பரத மகா மன்னரின் செயல்கள் ஆன்மீக வளர்ச்சிக்காக ஒருவன் எச்சரிக்கையுடன் கற்றுக்கொள்ள வேண்டிய பாடங்களாகும் Uh, an instance of the sequence which is uh, outlined in bhagavad gita by lord krishna the sequence of fall down veechi adaiyada pathina varisayil irukkuriya bhagavad gita la krishna vilakki irukkuriya adhe soonaraya vande inda adhyayatha nam paakrom dhyayatobishayantumsangasteshupajayatesangatsanjayatekamaha <clears throat> by meditating upon the objects of the senses one becomes attached to them from attachment arises desire namba vandu pulanagar pulanagar porkal mela 
பற்ற வளர்த்துக்கிறது மூலமா அதுல தியானத்தை நம்ம தியானத்தை செலுத்துறோம் அந்த தியானத்தில் செலுத்துறது மூலம் பற்ற அதிகரிக்கிறது so the process continues um with uh krodo bija uh, krodo bija krodo bija yate and so it goes on there's calm from the desire then comes anger or frustration and eventually one falls down adukapra the aasai lende adarku piragu kovam nadu varudhu veruppendru yerpadrudhu adarku piragu veechi adaiyam now this deer that Bharat Maharaj became attracted to would not normally be considered an object of sense gratification. Bharat Maharaj the man mel man mela patru kondar adu vandu poduva namu vandu or pulain nugarva or pulai nammal solla mudiyadu. Bharat Maharaj was performing selfless service to the deer. Ever heard that selfless service? Selfless service. Bharat Maharaj vandu inda maanida vandu soyala matra or seivai senjar appdi solli solralama appdi inga nam kelvi putruvom in the whole range of human experience activities and aspirations there is nothing higher than selfless service manidargaludaiya enna eechigalla avungaludaiya mulu anubavathil vandu soyala matra seivayoda or uyarndadaga edhuvume kedaiyadu but we have to know what is the vishay dhayato vishayan what is the vishay what is the uh, subject of that selfless service ara the soyana matra sevayinudaiya mukhyamana vishayam enna abindra namu therinjikkom not mukhyamana vishayam only vishayam veru it's supposed to be ekanta bhakti soyana matra sevai and the vishayatha namu enna endra therinjikkom that's the problem we think that well we may think that yeah krishna is the main object of our service but there are others also krishna da nammudaiya irudhi ilakku abindra irukkira pakshathila ava matha vishayangalum irukku abindra sandhandhil nam nanasikkirathu but the proper subject of us or, or the, the who our service should be offered to is to krishna nammudaiya sevai mulumaiya yaarukku arpana panrom abindra krishna irukku in technical language also uh, krishna no actually krishna is the object of our service and he's this in in the matter of prem krishna is the subject and then the receptacle of that is the devotee headed by shrimati radhika so nammude sevayude ilakku vande krishna da nammude sevayude ilakku adhe samayathila andha sevayude so although bharat maharaj's uh, service to the deer was certainly selfless it was to the wrong it, it was centered on the wrong person the wrong his selfless service was directed to the wrong uh, wrong direction not to krishna bharat maharajan vandu soyala matra sevai pannirundha kuda avaru avarudaiya avaru ilakkaga yaarukku sevai pannirundaro krishna mele illama vera oru vishayathu mele irundhathu he had no intention in the first place to give up his service to krishna avarudaiya ull nokkam vandu krishna udaiya sevai illa namu vidupadano abindra enna edhum kedaiyadhu avarukku but he became diverted ana avar vandu disa therivi poitta and this deer attracted his mind the man vand avare manada vand kavandittu as you can imagine deer and especially a baby deer they are very beautiful and attractive animals nam vand nam vand yosichu paakalam or kutti man adu vand adhigamana kavarchi yerpadathukoodiyathu and uh, when one being is dependent on another and very affectionate then the one who is providing this supposed protection naturally feels attracted toward that uh, being who they are protecting ore ore uirvaali innoru uirvaali mele patru kondirukke appo endha uirvaali vende andha uirvaali mele patru kondirukko adarudaiya paadhugaapu edhirpaagirathu andha paadhugaapu adu naadrudhu and the uh, 
very common example in the western world is that of dogs the dog very willingly takes the position of a pure devotee in relation to its master it recognizes that I am dependent on the master and it takes full shelter of the master and is very affectionate demonstrates his affection by when the master comes it wags its tail and might even jump up and down barking in excitement whereas your wife if you have one might not even lift her head to notice when you come home actually I saw something from the 1940s it was a what was it something in a woman's magazine in America and saying how when the man comes home the woman has to greet him nicely and that was just the culture but nowadays if there is if there is actually husband and wife then the husband might get back from work before the wife so the dog is central in western culture and even in the western world many of our devotees they keep dogs because the Vedic culture, that's not important. The main thing is to love Krishna. But that's the whole point of Vedic culture. Everything is arranged, organized to facilitate development of love of Krishna. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada often pointed out that human life is meant for development of love of God but in the Western world is more prominent love of dog so as long as we have not developed our uh, or, or re revived as long as the relationship with Krishna is not revived then there is always the temptation to uh, devolve toward uh, mundane affectionate relationships this happened with Bharat Maharaj who was an advanced devotee but the uh, the immediate presence of the deer took his attention away from his worship of Krishna Bharat Maharaj had the regular practice of sitting and meditating on Vishnu. But he would sit down and he would start thinking about the deer. And the deer, seeing himself neglected by Bharat Maharaj, who was not petting and fawning and saying woo woo to it, the deer would come and push with his nose against the body of Bharat Maharaj and disturb his so-called meditation. Okay. 
So while revive, on the process of reviving our natural attraction to Krishna, we have to be very careful not to be caught in mundane affection. And it is a very real risk for even devotees. If they keep dogs, they, they may become a dog in their next life due to uh, attraction to the dog. Especially if they don't uh, assiduously engage in the activities of devotional service. As Srila Prabhupada has pointed out in this uh, purport that he has given here. And in fact, we would expect that it's more likely that devotees who are not assiduously following the process of devotional service who become more inclined to have a pet dog. If we're not getting taste from Krishna conscious activities, then because it is our nature to want affection, then we may look for it elsewhere. And uh, in the days where there used to be brahmachari ashrams in the western world, uh, in our ISKCON temples, uh, you, I mean, it was the, that was the norm, uh, that was always warned to the brahmacharis that if we don't get taste in Krishna conscious activities, if we don't apply ourselves to that, then we'll look for taste in the form of a pretty wife. Which raises uh, another issue that in householder life should we be affectionate or should we is that all maya we have to channel our devotion toward Krishna and not become involved in the affection of family life uh, but this, uh, taking this principle to the extreme is, uh, it simply destroys any family life. Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Sakta Anabishvanga Putra Dara Griha Dishu, uh, that a person in knowledge is not attached to children, wife, home, etc. Krishna Bhagavad Gita is uh, but that doesn't mean that there's that one just acts like a stone in relation to to the family members. Rather, a, de a devotee, his affection is for Krishna, but. That doesn't mean that he is just yeah, cut off to everyone and everything else. Mm. Rather, his affection expands to everyone else. As we hear, Vasudhaiva Kotumbakam that we should see all living beings just like people see their family. We should see the whole world as our family. Mm. 
So this uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada is uh, stressing the need to stick to the basic principles of devotional service. Even if one is an advanced devotee, someone might think, well, now I'm an advanced devotee. That is the first, thinking like that is the first symptom that one is not an advanced devotee. So, even if one is an advanced devotee, one should follow all the basic principles of devotional service. <clears throat> but if someone thinks they're advanced, they're not advanced, so that means that everyone should follow. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that I'm advanced so I don't need to follow these rules, it's a very strange way of thinking. Because this, uh, the activities that are recommended, rising early, chanting Hare Krishna, these are rules for the beginning devotees, but they are naturally and happily engaged in by the advanced devotees. <laughs> Not that now I'm advanced, so I can sleep till nine o'clock in the morning. I don't have to get up and do sadhana. But, but rather one who is advanced will like to rise earlier, not, not later, and engage in more activities of devotional service. Sometimes there is a misunderstanding that, well, I'm a devotee and Krishna loves me, so Krishna will deliver me. As soon as one thinks, I am a devotee, it's a, one is in a very dangerous situation. That doesn't mean one to think, I am a non-devotee, and then go out and eat meat and drink wine and do all forbidden activities. <laughs> but one should think, I am, an as I am aspiring to be a servant of the devotees. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada instructed one of his disciples, one of his disciples sent a poem that he had written in which in the poem he writes, this devotee is praying to you, Krishna, something like this. And Srila Prabhupada instructed that devotee, that you, devotee doesn't think he's devotee, he doesn't write that, well, I'm your devotee, I'm a devotee. He thinks, I'm just trying to become a devotee. Often we hear devotees say things, it, we can refer to them as devotees, but we ourselves should not refer to ourselves like that. So we often hear that, well, when I first became a devotee, a devotee saying things like this. Often we are asked questions like this, how long have you been a devotee? So I can only say that, well, I'm, you know, I've been trying, Make, or at least making some kind of pretense or show of trying for so long. To, to be a devotee is a very advanced position. And 
uh, that can be attained. And, uh, it's not that it's uh, unattainable. But there is a process given. Bharat Maharaj was in the process. He had gone a long way along the process. We are given the process that Srila Prabhupada has summarized here. Rise early in the morning. Bathe. Attend Mangalarti. Worship the deities. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Study the Vedic literatures. And follow all the rules prescribed by the Acharyas and the spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada continues, if we deviate from this process, we may fall down even though we may be very highly advanced. Actually, if one is very highly advanced, one will not want to deviate from this process. He'll, be, he'll take pleasure in it. So this idea that, well, I'm a devotee and Krishna will deliver me. So you don't really have to worry about following all these things. This uh, Srila Prabhupada compared to uh, not going to university and expecting an honorary degree. Sometimes universities award an honorary degree to uh, persons who have never studied uh, the course at that university or any other university. If someone excels in a certain field, even without having taken formal training, in recognition of their contribution to that field, they may be awarded an honorary degree. Mm. But if one uh, thinks, well, I won't go to university and study anything, I'll just wait for some university to give me an honorary degree, and such a way of thinking is foolish. So there is no doubt that the uh, the mercy of the spiritual master is the active principle in spiritual life. But uh, his mercy manifests largely as his instruction. There is a process of devotional service which helps to gradually take the mind away from all that is illusory and bring it to be always thinking of Krishna. And the mercy of the Guru is that he teaches this process. Um, both by precept, by speaking it, teaching it, and by practice, by personally showing it. Achinoti Yashastrani Achare Stapyatyapi Swayam Achate Yasmat Acharyas Tena Kirtitaha. The definition of an Acharya is 
uh, that he, he knows, teaches, and teach, uh, establishes and teaches by his personal example the principles of Shastra. So one might think, well, I can just learn it all from a book. Do it yourself, Bhakti. How to become a pure devotee in 30 days. <laughs> but as uh, Srila Prabhupada writes in the first sentence of the purport previous to this, uh, in, in one short sentence he uh, summarizes so much important instruction. The laws of nature work in subtle ways unknown to us. Mm. Mm. Very important statement. So it. it the laws of nature may be working on us and we're not even aware of that. <laughs> so that's why we may think that we're actually very advanced and but we're actually not, but because we're not aware of how Maya is working on us. <laughs> Therefore, this process of devotional service is given. But even just, even if we follow all these rules and regulations, we still might not make much advancement. Because uh, advancement in devotional service depends upon the attitude of the performer. So if there are defects in our whole outlook and approach to devotional service, even though we follow the rules and regulations very strictly, we might not make proper progress. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, mentioned some of the common uh, obstructions to advancement in devotional service. Nishedacha, Kutinati, Jibe Hingshan, Lab Puja Pratishta Jato Upashakargan. He said that to uh, engage to behave in ways that are forbidden. Uh, to be diplomatic. To be uh, envious, inimical to other living beings. And uh, especially this line is uh, the, the, the second line, or the, these words, la puja pratishta. These are often, these, particularly these three, are mentioned repeatedly as the common snares that. Uh, halt our spiritual progress. The desire for uh, wealth, the desire for respect, the desire for position, all of these are weeds which choke the creeper of devotional service. So Guru is also required to guide us as we go along with the process. To uh, 
help us to imbibe the right attitude sariyana manapanmai enna abindrathu therinjikkuradhukku guru vandu udavara the various subtle misunderstandings that we may have they should be addressed the sukshma pala vishayangala nam thavara purinju vechirukkom adella vandu vilakkapadanum now of course the mercy of the spiritual master is the active principle in spiritual life kandipa or guru nudaiya karunai da nammudaiya aanmiga payirchila mukkiyathuvam perarudhu and shila prabhupad did make statements such as said to have said it's a well known quote that if you just hold on to my dhoti i'll take you back to godhead shila prabhupad vandu prabhupada master la vaakyam sollirga nee vandu ennudaiya But we should consider exactly what that means. This is this saying is ascribed to Shri La Prabhupada. Shri La Prabhupada, what is the meaning of that? So, what does that mean? Obviously, it's not literal. If you tried to just hold on to Shila Prabhupada's dhoti all the time, I don't, I don't think he'd be pleased if you even tried to hold on to it for one second, to literally grab it and hold on to it. And, and of the clothes that Shila Prabhupada wore, if someone finds out and just holds on to it throughout his life, to literally hold on to it, uh that also it's not what is meant by this statement shila prabhupad potukra potukra mele potukra thoni vandu namu appadiye romba gattiya adu pudichindom appadina adu vandu sariyana da kedaiyadhu so what does it mean exactly so appadina enna artham does it mean to roar at the top of our voice jai shila prabhupad jai shila prabhupad appadina romba re sathama sollama well that is very nice adu nalla daanu but there has to be more to it than this otherwise we fall into one of the uh illogical situation one of the misunderstandings that typify christianity abrinaa namu vandu christo madam vandu the pinpatra mari sila sailil namu vandu nyaya matra nilai sila sailil paniduvom there is this uh, theological mistake in christianity that if you just believe in jesus jesus will save you to believe in jesus means to say that i believe do you know what the formula exactly i believe that jesus is my my lord and master and savior something like that you're supposed to say you just have to say that and then you're saved then you, it doesn't matter what else you do you say jesus ena kaapatra kudivar avare enoda yajamanar abdi namu solidom abina avarda avar namala kaapathirukar i didn't get that that's from the born again christians i was raised as a catholic this is somewhat different culture so uh you you have to accept jesus into your heart it's all very vague not much defined what does it mean to accept jesus into your heart Once Srila Prabhupada on a morning walk with his disciples, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he uh, took the position of the devil's advocate, Purva Pakshin, you could say. Srila Prabhupada, one day, 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 and he said that well he challenged his disciples who are walking with him well what's what's wrong with christian what what would you say to christians avar sir christo madha pinpatrarulla enna thappu irukku avangalukku neenga edhu thani enna solluvinga and various devotees gave various things pala bhaktargal pala vilakkangala kuduthaanga and uh, shila prabhupad counted them all shila prabhupad ellathukku vandu badal kudutar and eventually a devotee uh, disciple of shila prabhupad gave a statement which shila prabhupad accepted kadasila oru seeler vandu oru vaakiyatha sonnar and prabhupad edunnar the devotee said that well if you claim to be followers of jesus why don't you follow his instructions 
And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, this is the point. So in the same way, if we only say Jai Srila Prabhupada and think that, well, Prabhupada is very merciful and whatever I do doesn't matter because Prabhupada will save me, then we're in exactly the same position as this uh, Christianity, which has, it, it doesn't foster actual religious principles or love of God because it is based on this cop out, this mistake, which allows us to do all wrong things and think that anyway we're saved. We know for sure if someone if someone is a bogus sadhu, if they just say, well, you just remember me and everything will be all right, Allah, Sai Baba and others. But a real sadhu gives instructions to people so that they may be sinless and so that they may progress either toward or on the path of God consciousness. The basic principles that Srila Prabhupada has outlined here, he repeats umpteen times in his letters to his disciples. Rise early, chant 16 rounds, attend Mangalati, all these things. So if we invent this philosophy, well, we just, just Guru's mercy, that's all. But what are the instructions of the Guru? That is his mercy. We have, if we take those instructions very seriously, then surely we will get his mercy and he will cover up our, our uh, inabilities. But we have to at least do what he says. Srila Prabhupada, in, in another conversation, he said that if, if a person doesn't follow Krishna's instructions, then Krishna cannot help him. It was a dis the discussion about Krishna's mercy. You may say, well, Krishna cannot help you? Krishna is incapable of helping us? Now, of course, Krishna is fully capable of helping us. But we cannot stipulate how Krishna should help us. Krishna helps us by giving us the instructions by which we can revive our dormant Krishna consciousness. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Shadha Kabunai Shabanadi Shuddha Chitte Kare Udoi Love for Krishna is dormant within everyone's consciousness. That dormant love for Krishna is revived by the process of devotional service which begins by hearing about Krishna. Maya Mugdha Jeeva Nahi Krishna Shvata Gyan Jibere Kripa Koile Krishna Bedu Puran We're in Maya, Maya means ignorance Therefore, we, our natural knowledge and love for Krishna is not apparent. 
நம்ம வந்து மாயினால இப்ப கவரப்பட்டிருக்கோம் அந்த மாயினால கவரப்பட்டிருக்கிறதுனால நம்மளுக்கு இயற்கையாகவே இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த கிருஷ்ண மேல இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த ஞானம் வந்து வெளிப்படையாக தெரியறது இல்லை We are bewildered by Maya. Maya is also very bewildered. So Krishna, being merciful to the bewildered jivas, has given them the Vedic knowledge. The Maya is also very bewildered. The jivas are also very bewildered. So Krishna has given them the Vedic knowledge. And Krishna has given us. Shila Prabhupada went on to explain in this conversation that, that Krishna has given us minute independence. Krishna. Uh, So if if we are if we don't follow the instructions given by Krishna, then Krishna cannot help us. Now Krishna could have given us the arrival of the pin part of the pin, so now Krishna alone can do something. We may. It's just like if you're fallen in a well and someone throws down a rope. If we are going to go to the well, then we are going to go to the well. We are going to go to the well. You say, well, uh, I don't want to be pulled up by a rope. Why don't you come down and put me on your shoulders and climb up the side of the well? Or we put some conditions. Well, bef- okay, I'll hold on to the rope and then you pull me up. But before that, you have to throw me down uh, a good meal. I'm hungry. நீங்க <laughs> அது வந்து ஒரு பக்தருடைய சரியான மனப்பான்மை தான் but we should recognize the nature of krishna's mercy how it manifests அதே சமயத்துல கிருஷ்ணனுடைய இயற்கை எப்படி தோற்றம் அளிக்கிறது அதனுடைய நிலை என்னன்றதை நாம் புரிஞ்சிக்கிறதுக்கு முயற்சி பண்ணுவோம் and accept the mercy in the form of the process of devotional service that is given to help purify us நம்மள தூய்மைப்படுத்துறதுக்கு கோசரம் அந்த பக்தி தொண்டு வழிமுறை கொடுக்கப்பட்டிருக்கு அதை நாம் ஏத்துக்கணும் and at the same time pray for the mercy of krishna thinking that I am incapable it's not that by I, yeah okay go on adhe samayathila enakku vande endha vidhamana shakthiyum kodaiyadhu abindradhey or bhaktan angeekarikkaru I have chanted 3 times 64 rounds for the last 64 years okay break down the gates of vaikuntha i'm coming folks kadanda 64 varshama moondru moondru suthu 64 maala jala jaavam panirken vaikuntha avarude vaasalla therandhukku ella thayara irukkaana varapora that means that someone who has such an attitude means they never chanted one round in their life they might have uh, what's that word they might have uh, i i can't remember the word. they might have ejaculated the words hari krishna from their mouth articulated articulated but they never in their chanting they never prayed oh krishna oh energy of krishna please engage me in your service shri krishna chaitanya prabhu das erano das prarthana karoy sada narottama das considering Narottam says Narottanda sings that considering myself the servant of the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, I'm always praying always praying for the mercy Narottam says solra na vande Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ude sevagan ude sevagan abindra na manapanmil epime karunai kosaram engindirukken abindra So again we come to the point that advancement in devotional service depends on the attitude of the performer So there are so many elements to consider. We have to follow the process of devotional service. Our attitude has to be proper. That proper attitude will we can imbibe that if we are sincere we can imbibe that by associating with sincere and advanced devotees 
சரியான மனப்பான்மை எப்படி வளர்த்துக்கிறது நம்ம நம்ம வந்து தீவிரமா இருந்தோம் அப்படின்னா தீவிரமா மற்றும் தீவிரமாகவும் நேர்மையாகவும் பயிற்சி பண்ணக்கூடிய முதிர்ந்த பக்தர்களுடைய சங்கத நம்ம நாடுவோம் அட்வான்ஸ்மெண்ட் We have to get them all right. But then again, it's not just a mechanical formula. At the same time, we should know if we sincerely apply ourselves to this process, then surely Krishna will help us. நேர்மையோட <laughs> You know, don't watch pornography and don't go to bars but we're not one that be careful if a deer comes up you know, the heavy maya a little deer cub nammalukku vande ellarum maar kandarathira therivikranga adhavadhu aavasa padangala paagada kudi ellarudey poi kudikada ana yaar edhirpaagadhe illa oru maan maaya vande maan roopathil vande nammala cover pannu in this in this case uh, indra didn't send the apsara the apsara army to tempt bharat maharaj inda kurippitta sambhavathil vandu paathinga bharat maharaj ara cover eduthu indra vandu apsara avanude padaiyala anupula he escaped he, i mean he wasn't even offered that temptation avaru vandu the apsara kalavana kondra seiyala but the the <laughs> attraction to beautiful women that is a, a very powerful attraction of maya aragiya pengal vela epadi kavarchi vandu romba shakti vaindathu adu periya valavu maya enudi taakam adu but no you wouldn't think of a little deer what's that you know a deer is going to it's going to make you fall down in devotional service illa maana bhakti thondala nee vandu veeshan edhu kaaranam maana maana epdi maana irukku maana veeshan edhu porudhu but the attraction to that deer became of cause of fall down for bharat maharaj and the man mele erpatta kavarchiye bharat maharaj reach aanadhu kaaramaa eduthu but then again if you think well i'm i'm not going to be affectionate to anyone adhe samayathile nam nadikkiru na yaar veli pattu kolla porudhala apdina oru mudivu kondra vechu then you're likely to make offenses appo enna agum aparadha nam velaiyikkira mari oru sugal erpadu by mistreating people avu vandu nam vandu makkal kitta seriya nadandukama avu aparadha thavi mudiyavudhu so it's a it's a very subtle path durgang patas tat kabayo balanti it's a it's not in one some ways devotional service is very easy in other ways the laws of nature work in subtle ways unknown to us hey idu vandu migum sookshamana paadai yerkeyude satta thittangal vandu nam edhir paakara maari nadakkiradhu adhu vandu namalukku theriyama vela nariya vishayangal nadakkiradhu In hearing all this we shouldn't become despondent. Adhey man idella kekkaradhu moolamaga namma vandu namma urchaga mattrolla irukkudadhu. Definitely Krishna's mercy, Srila Prabhupada's mercy, these are very powerful and we should be confident of their help and their protection. Kandipaga Krishnanude karunai, Srila Prabhupada karunai idella megavum shakti vaindathu. And the shakti and the karunai namalu karunai kosam namme enga irukkanum adhu namal nambikke irukkanum. But at the same time we shouldn't take the mercy of hari guru and vaishnavas for granted adhe samayathila namma vandu or sadharanamana or vishayam ella vishayam pole and hari guru vaishnavude thangai or sadharanamana or vishayam nani nenachirukkaru we have to make our effort also nammala nammude muyarchigala seluthurum and very uh, tivrena it should be a very intense effort will it will attract the full mercy of krishna krishnanude mulu avarude karunai namma mulumaya pedrathukku namma tivra tivrama bhakti palichukkaru Hare Krishna. Any questions about this place? Want to say something? Yeah. Do you have the other mic here? But how are you going to translate? Are you going to translate it all at once when the question's finished? Okay. 
You have to change the, uh, yeah, then you have to, how do you do? Ah, ha, ha, I see. And then you have to put that over, anyway, up to you. You work it out. I think I had enough sunshine for now. Ah. In Bhagavad Gita 331, Maharaj, in the purple, Srila Prabhupada says, in the beginning practice of devotional service, one may not be able to follow all the rules and regulations. Oh. But if one is not resentful of those principles, then one will make advancements. You were basically making a point, I think. You tried your best. May, you may not come up to the topmost standard, you may um, not be able to follow everything, but if you continue enthusiastically trying, you just pull it up. Yeah, the idea that if we may not be able to follow everything, but at the same time, if we try our best, we can be sure that Krishna will help. yeah that is definitely a fact but I was also trying to point out that we should be careful of the cheating that we might even inadvertently indulge in <laughs> self cheating what we may consider trying our best might not be our best. We, we may tend to make excuses for ourselves. <laughs> Nowadays we hear a lot about the lenience of Śrīla Prabhupāda. Do you know what that means, lenience? It means uh, liberality, or, or no, forgiving, um, giving, yeah, giving concessions, yeah, and, and forgiving shortcomings, that's exactly the right word. <laughs> but Srila Prabhupada could be um, seemingly impossibly demanding also. Tamal Krishna Goswami recalled that Srila Prabhupada once told him to read his book, Srila Prabhupada's books, for a minimum two hours daily. And Tamal Krishna Goswami replied that, well, I don't have time, Srila Prabhupada. And Tamal Krishna Goswami replied, no, Srila Prabhupada replied that we have to make time. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj replied that, well, I'm sleeping maximum five hours daily, and I'm, I'm, he went through his whole shed, I'm busy morning till night. At that time he was personally serving Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada said to him, then, anyway, you sleep less, which didn't seem physically possible for, him, for Tamal Krishnamara. Uh, 
Uh, and there, there are several instances of this. Guru Kripa Prabhu also, he, uh, he recounted an incident like this. Guru Kripa Prabhu also in Himalayas there was a sambhava that was in the middle of the night. The Prabhupada called him in the middle of the night once. Shri Prabhupada was there in the middle of the night and uh, Prabhupada said, "Why are you sleeping? What are you doing? I'm sleeping. Why are you sleeping?" And he said, "Well, you know." <laughs> and Prabhupada got in his, 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 his got in his case. Why are you sleeping? <laughs> And and it's, Guru Kripa said, "Well, I'm not a pure devotee like you. Said, Why aren't you a pure devotee?" <laughs> and he really got on his case. <laughs> till he was almost crying. <laughs> Why aren't you a pure devotee? <laughs> so it's true that we should do our best, but at the same time. We shouldn't ever think that I am doing my best. That will lead to complacency, and complacency leads to fall down. The whole attitude of the Prakrita Sahajiyas or false devotees is that, well, we are devotees, Krishna loves us, so even if we do things that maybe are not correct, but anyway, we can do it because Krishna, he's very merciful. So, so unless we very clearly understand how to apply the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, and the uh, principle of how His mercy works, then we are likely to uh, commandeer His mercy and as, as an excuse for us to be fallen. And that means that the whole the flow of devotion, pure devotional service is diverted and spoiled. We can use Srila Prabhupada's instructions which are only meant to lead us to pure devotional service to lead us to hell. Once I got on the case of one of my god brothers, I said, Why, what's this getting up at 8 o'clock every morning? And he said, well, Prabhupada, he said that his father got up late every morning. So, neglecting Srila Prabhupada's multiple instructions to his disciples to rise early, he cited the case of Srila Prabhupada's father, who rose what Srila Prabhupada said a little late. <laughs> And he was convinced that this is complete justification for him to rise at 8 o'clock every morning. So, we should understand very clearly that's a, a, a maybe gross example of misusing Srila Prabhupada's instructions, but there may be others which are not so gross. Just like this whole idea that my study at school and, and my 
career, my working hard so I can get ahead in my career. That's all my devotional service. Now, that can be, in a secondary manner, someone's devotional service. If they're fully focused as, as, uh, under the order of their guru, that you have, this is the best way for you to perform devotional service for, I don't know, infiltrate the academy or, or whatever, whatever reason might be given. But it is regularly taught as if it were part of the Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu uh, to hundreds of people who take interest in young men who take interest in Krishna consciousness because uh, it conveniently saves them from having to consider what pure devotional service actually is and allows them to go on with their material desires and think that it's pure devotional service. Uh, and they impart the materialistic concept into devotional service that someone who has a high university degree or a well-earning, reputable job, then they are, they are doing very well. Someone who has a high university degree is, and who is a devotee is better than someone who has no degree because they have more to sacrifice or, or they're, they're not doing it just for the money. So this is tweaking the instructions of Guru Sadhu and Shastra. Tweaking means, you know what that means? It means making a slight, slight adjustment. And the result is tremendous. So many dozens of young men join our movement and so many hundreds of respectable people take to devotional service. But what kind of devotional service? And then you get them writing books. Instead of writing books about pure devotional service, a whole book on how to succeed as a student. And on one page in the 100 page plus book, it says that, well, you should also be religious and you can chant, you can chant the names of God such as, and then the Mahamantra is given. And that's the only allusion to anything to do with Krishna consciousness in the whole book. So it's very successful in making devotees, but they don't have a clear understanding of what devotional service is. It's very different to the attitude that Srila Prabhupada imbibed on his first meeting with Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. When Srila Prabhupada superficially as a member of Gandhi's 
uh, independence movement or whatever it was, he uh, argued with Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur that we need national independence first before we can promote Chaitanya Dev's teachings. And Bhaktisthan Sarasvai Thakur replied that Krishna consciousness is so urgent it cannot wait for any political adjustment. Okay, I think we'll finish now. It's getting late. And we have to do the prizes and other things. Hmm? Another question? Okay. Is that all right? You're, you're supposed to uh, say, you have time. All right. You're not, uh, and but the, the, the breaking the fast has to, to so-called fast. Is that okay? That jiva is in ignorance, and uh, when your devotees when they commit mistakes in devotional life, so they are influenced by Maya, and actually, uh, jiva becomes responsible for committing mistakes, or actually Maya, because it's the influence of Maya. The influence of Maya causes the jiva to make mistakes. So is the jiva responsible or is Maya responsible? A man is in court and he, for having stabbed someone else to death, and he says to the judge, well, it was someone else who told me to do it. So does the murderer become free from his crime for having taken the bad advice? Clearly not. So, Maya, she, uh, that is her service to Krishna to induce us to forget Krishna, very unusual service. But in one, but in one way she helps to induce remembrance of Krishna by, uh, by reifying the suffering which is the which is natural by forgetting Krishna. Reifying means giving positive shape to. Purusha, what is that? Karya karna katritve hetu prakriti ruchyate. Purusha sukha dukha anam bhuktritve hetu ruchyate. The, uh, what goes on in this world, the mechanism of this world, is caused by Maya. Material nature. But our own, the, the suffering and pleasure in this world of the individual living being is caused by himself. It's easy to understand. Otherwise, uh, there again we come to the position of being a robot. Maya made me do it. We have free choice. Which, which we can use or misuse. So, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Hare Krishna.